hello guys my graphics here welcome to my tutorial once again and today i'm going to be showing you how to create a slice test effect using adobe photoshop cc21 so without further ado guys let's get started So guys, for this project, I'm using a 2000 by 2000 pixel size, a 300 resolution and a narrow GB color mode. So first things first guys, I'll be typing the text that I'll be using for this project. And that will be the number 8. Then I'll change um, the font to railway. And remember guys, that all the fonts that I'll be using for this project, all the backgrounds and all the images, uh, the link to these files will be found at the description. I'll be dropping the link to my Dropbox where you can access all these files from. So I'll select all and then I'll make sure this test is aligned to the center. So I decided to change um, the font style and then I'm going to hit ctrl T and then expand this and then ctrl J to duplicate the test so I'll be changing this to um, the letter K And I'll be using the capital letter K. Then I'll be adjusting my test size. Okay, let me move this up a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to be adjusting um, the font again. I think I should go with extra bold this time. So we have this right now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer mask on the test layer. So for that, I'll create a shape. And the reason why I'm creating this shape is for me to get an actual measurement. So once I'm done with that, I'll, I'll head over to my layers panel. And while hitting the control button, I'll select this uh, shape layer. And we'll make a selection of it. Then I'll create a layer max on the test layer. Then Control I to invert. And then the next thing I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be typing the test that I'll be using for this um for the second part of the write up. And um, that's just um, followers on Instagram. That's because I initially made this uh, design to celebrate 8,000 followers on Instagram. And I want to use this opportunity to thank everyone who's following me on Instagram, who has subscribed to my YouTube channel, who's following me on Facebook. I really appreciate you guys for always sticking with me, even through the tough times, even though I know that um, I've not gotten to the uh, level where I want to get to, and I've not gotten to the level where I can say I'm. Um, perfect but you guys are always sticking with me despite my flaws so guys thank you for following thank you for subscribing and thank you for always watching and liking and commenting on my videos so i'll be adjusting the test okay reduce it a little bit Then I'll move it to the area that I created the layer mask and I'll reduce it uh, to fitting to the 
area. Okay. So before we move into the next step, which is creating the background, I'll select all these uh, layers and I'll group them together. Then let me get rid of the shape layer. And then for the next part of this tutorial, I'll be creating a background for this design. So I'll be placing um, an image that I downloaded online. That's just a 3D Instagram logo. So for the background, I'll be using a, a gradient overlay for the background but first of all let me convert this to let me create a layer from this background and then I'll right click um, blending options then I'll head over to gradient overlay so I'll set the color based on the color from the image Okay, let me get rid of this. Okay. So I'll change the blend mode of this to normal. And then I'll change this to linear, the style. And then I'll change the scale to 100%. So I converted this to a smart object and I'll be renaming it to background. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to play around with this uh, image of the 3D logo using the Gaussian blur effect. To play around with it a little bit all around the background. So the reason why I'm doing this is to um so my background won't look boring, so that um my background won't just be there, but to have some things that will help spice it up. And this is what I normally do for my social media designs. As a designer, I basically don't like uh, most of my background being empty. That's why I make I make uh, use of a lot of overlays, and uh, I'll be trying my best to drop some of the overlays that I use um, on the description. Because like I said, as a designer, I don't like um, my background being empty. I don't just like a solid color or maybe just white or maybe just the color. I love playing around with my background. So... So nothing special here, um, 
this is just me trying to freestyle and um, trying to make this look nice. Okay, so I, I group this and uh, I, I'm changing the name to Instagram logos. So right now we are heading to the main part of this tutorial and that will be creating a slice test effect. So before I head over to that, I'll be placing um, the golden uh, gradient that I downloaded. And I'll be clipping it to the um, grouped test of um, the it and the key. And then for the followers on Instagram, I'll simply change the test to white. Okay, so then I'll turn this to, okay, let me just make some adjustment to this before I convert it to a smart object. Convert to smart object. Then I'll duplicate this. Then I'll hide the second layer. And then for the first layer, I'm going to rasterize it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pen tool to create um, a shape. Make selection of, of this um, shape. Then um, I'm going to create a new layer and then fill it with a, a solid color using my paint bucket too. Then I'll make a selection of this shape, holding control and hitting the layer. And then what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to create a new layer from this selection. And then from the, for the original layer, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to create a layer mask. So I'll be hiding the selection. And then I'll go to the other layer that I created from the selection and I'm going to use um, my move to, to actually move it um, the way I want it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift this uh, shape up a little bit. And then I'll see you make a selection of uh, this shape. To do that, uh, you have to hold control and click on the layer. And then create a new layer from the selection. And then come over to the original layer and um, create uh, a layer max and hide the selection. So that's just the way to do this, um, to play around with your layer mask and uh, to create uh, new layers from the selection. So what you, you have to be careful when doing this because uh, most times, like I made that mistake initially when I was uh, creating this design, is that most times you may, you have to be careful not to still um, hide the layer, add the selection on uh, the layer that you created from the selection. So you have to make sure that you sort out the ones that you are actually masking and the ones that you are actually creating a selection from. So what I did was to convert this to a smart object. Make sure it's aligned once again. And, um, I'll... Um, Okay, so now we have our smart object here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, 
increase the canvas size of this layer and then um, press ctrl s on my keyboard to save once i'm done then head over to the other window and um, Control T, go to um, WAP, and for this I'll be using Wave, so I'll set my, um, my bend to 10, okay, so this um, part of this tutorial is actually optional, you mustn't um, bend uh, or slant the test. But I don't know, recently I've been I've been obsessed with slanting tests in my designs. Many of those who follow me on my Instagram, many of those who also follow me on, uh, who chat with me on WhatsApp or who are on the same graphic design group uh, with me will notice that of late I've been slanting my tests a lot and uh, this is how I actually achieve that. But to be honest with you guys, if you ask me the reason why I slant my test most of the times, I don't even know the reply to give to you. Like, I just love it. I don't know why. Just like I love um, tiny tests. I love making sure I reduce my test to this time. So don't try that at home because I've actually faced a lot of problems with that. I could remember when I uh, designed the flex um, that was meant to be printed um, on a flex banner machine. So most of my tests we are very very tiny and um, and it was a black background. So I noticed that the ink, due to the pressure of the ink uh, on the print uh, on the flex material, uh, most of the tests were smeared. So that was. A hard lesson I learned um, from using tiny tests. So make sure to make your test um, easy to read when you are uh, making your next design project. Don't make it too tiny and don't make it too big because there are some people that have that um, character of making their test too big. So it all boils down to hierarchy and um, contrast, uh, giving um, giving emphasis on things that matter more in the design than things that don't matter. For example, thank you in this design. Um, not a way of saying that thank you doesn't matter. I know I'm trying to say thank you to you guys, uh, but it's not the major part of the design. The major part of the design is me telling you that... Uh, that we have 8k followers on instagram so i made more emphasis on the 8k followers on instagram and then i'll be adding my imprint uh, with my favorite font so in case you don't know um my favorite font is um, autograph and of recent i've been using this more than my main logo so we are almost done with this tutorial so guys be careful when you are watching this video because um to take note of all the points that i made um and the way that i um created this land test effect um And if you want um, a comprehensive, um, detailed analysis on this slant test effect, uh, you can uh, hit me up on the comment section and uh, I'll be able to maybe create a more detailed video on this because I use this both on um, test and I use this basically on most of my designs.
so guys thank you for staying to the end of this tutorial section remember to like remember to share and remember to comment on this video so guys thank you mess graphics out